With Halloween right around the corner, I figured now would be a good time to talk about a game that I've wanted to for a long time now. Duskers is a neat little game, and I still haven't played anything else quite like it. It is light in the story, so I figured this would be a good follow-up from the last round. The premise this time looks to be pretty simple, so let's get into it. Duskers takes place at an unknown point in the far future. All of humanity, except for yourself, has vanished. You've woken up alone aboard your own spaceship, with only a few drones to keep you company. Your goal is to use these to explore human derelicts across the universe and find out where the human race has vanished to. There are some interesting bits here, but nothing I'll get too far into. It's the gameplay that makes it worth talking about, and how it presents itself, and those two really go hand in hand. Because Duskers doesn't just look like DOS, Duskers can play like DOS. Now that does sound like some kind of torture at first, but there is a lot of fun and tension behind this very simple interface. So here's how it works. You get a brief tutorial explaining the basics of drone control. You've got your main screen which shows the overhead map of the derelict, but you can also switch to individual drone cameras and control them with your arrow keys. No matter what, you have access to your command prompt at all times. Typing something like A3 will open or close airlock 3. D1 would open door 1, a command like gather would have your drone collect all resources in a room, and all of these commands will try to autofill as you type them. What a drone can do besides navigation is based on the equipment you give it, meaning that each only has a few actions it can do. So no, Duskers isn't a programming game, thank god. You can use semicolons to string actions together, or make an alias for some custom preset actions you made, but that's about as far as it goes. If anything, Duskers relies on you playing very reactively, so you can't just look at a derelict map and code up a Minecraft server to win. That would be a waste of time and a dumb idea. Your drones are there to collect what information and resources they can, and then move on. You don't have to explore every room of a derelict, nor should you. The humans may be gone, but you are rarely alone aboard their ships. You try to find what you can and last as long as possible until you're either wiped out or you're stuck. Then you can reset your run and try again. It also looks like the resets happen inside the plot of the game. Duskers is a roguelike, but you don't start completely from scratch. Any missions or objectives related to the story will be right where you had them. You'll just be back to your old ship and a different fleet of starting drones. The universe itself is randomized, so no exploration lost there. That's the simple overview of it. Because all that on its own sounds like it could still be a simple educational game. Duskers sets out to be a horror game. Having your game's horror be effective can already be challenging, and in this case, it's even harder when your game looks like the system I used to order tile in back in retail. But I've seen some people call this the scariest game they've played. Now, I would not say this is the scariest game I've played, not by a long shot, but I could see this game being pretty hellish to someone with high anxiety. So let me show you a bit of Dusker's gameplay. For being so simple, the game has a lot of atmosphere to it. We're deep in that magical Ridley Scott alien future. You can fly to a different solar system, but your PC won't have a taskbar. The visuals do a great job with this, but it's the sound that really pulls you in. Duskers is a game you play entirely with your keyboard, whether it's exploring with the drones, or visiting a vending machine, or traveling the stars. There's no music, but even in the overworld you get a lot of feedback with clicking keys and whirs and the sounds of metal crunching. The sound design is great enough to immerse you more into it instead of wondering where's the music. But even before you're playing with robots, it's emphasizing that the sound is worth paying attention to. It's also pumping in some hissy white noise, so it's never always completely silent. When you're on the ship, every beep and ring is feeding you information. Whether you press on or not is always up to you. This is also a double-edged sword because you have to decide when things look too dangerous to continue. Sound can warn of a danger long before your command prompt spits it up. That's the sound of the lowest spitter's handiwork about to get a room depressurized. You don't have exact details and forecasts from the computer yet, but you now know of a likely upcoming problem. All your decisions are based on limited information. On a good day, your drone cameras are flickery and unclear but without proper maintenance, their feeds can get glitchier, or cut out entirely for a bit. No matter how careful you are, you'll eventually have to take risks and push into the unknown. The game really plays with how much information it'll directly give you when you desperately want that. Maybe you do hear an enemy, but can you tell what room they're actually in? Maybe I vented them into space. Maybe not. You have in-game tools to help succeed, but your actual senses are always helpful. It's also hard to directly see the threats. 
and some of them move extremely fast. Everything from the chunky sound to the shaky visuals helps build tension. You can gather enough sure thing information to have a risk-free venture into many derelicts. But as the game goes on, riskier moves become more appealing. Or situations can change like you kill an enemy, but now their body is stopping a door from closing. So you're managing your drones, watching the command prompt and sweeping the ship, but you're also listening like a sonar operator for anything else that could be going wrong. The atmosphere keeps the pressure up on you. You can't see as well or as far as any of your enemies, and any sound you hear is through your drone's feed, muffled and distant. This also complements the whole theme of the game in that you're playing a salvager. You could spend the money and fully repair a drone's video feed, but is that really worth it? You might find a new drone to tow in and fix up and just scrap the old one. Everything you're working with is decaying and broken, and the game reinforces this constantly just by looking at it. These drones aren't super-powered, they're clunky. You're trying to discover the fate of humanity and absolutely do not have the tools for the job. This is like if Wish.com sponsored a LEGO Mindstorm event for nuclear disaster relief. These are not Terminators. These are Roombas. And while some games have had effective battle Roombas, those were new and not degraded. However, you can still have a lot of options at your disposal. There's a few parts of this to go through. Thank you. You usually send your drones in with a landing craft. The first room will have a generator that a proper drone can power up, and this will give you control of the first few doors. There can be more generators deeper in, so you might need to move your power drone around. Still, even a stationary drone can be given all kinds of helpful tools. One of the first and most basic upgrades is the motion tracker. This will mark rooms without moving enemies as green, and will mark problem rooms as red. One of your more basic tactics is using your motion sensor to open doors and funnel the enemy into an area. Most commonly, an airlock that can vent them into deep space. It sounds simple, but it's not always the ideal solution. For one, your motion tracker will sometimes show up as yellow, which is inconclusive. You'll have to use another tool or properly scout it out to make sure. Also, the sensor only detects moving enemies, and very slow-growing infestations will never show up. So if you weren't scouting carefully, even rooms that were marked as green might have a nasty surprise waiting for you trying to get back on the ship. And while chucking your enemies into the void can be very cathartic, there are some issues attached to that. If you hadn't scoured that area yet, any items go out the door as well. The event might cripple nearby doors or utilities, or even destroy the whole room. It'll stop the immediate threat, but who knows what that'll mean later. See, if the motion sensor was a perfect enemy detector, and opening an airlock had no possible other consequences to it, Duskers would just be a puzzle game. There's a lot of RNG at play, and even the tools you're using aren't completely safe. The main resource that you're after in the game is scrap. You can find it lying around on ships, or sometimes dropped by enemies, and you can also get it by towing out broken drones and melting them down in their upgrades instead of repairing or using them. However, after each mission your drones and all their upgrades will begin to degrade. Their chances of breaking increase until you repair the upgrade, or the deed is done. Again, this is very in line with the theme, and it's rare you'll be sitting on a dragon horde of scrap. So even an item or upgrade you don't want can still be broken down and made useful. So this makes the airlock dunk tank in an unexplored room even more unappealing. There are multiple tools you can use for getting through a derelict. There are placeable sensors that let you reliably track any enemy. So you could just entomb one in a room if you're sure they have no other way out. You could try luring an enemy into a room or using a proximity mine or even a remote control detonator, though keep in mind how bombs can still affect the ship. You can forego bombs and other noisier solutions by equipping your drones for combat, though developing a combat drone does mean more investment risk. Using a gun drone can be incredibly effective on some enemies, but keep in mind those bullets won't be free to replace and some enemies will go through tons of ammo before you slow them down. There's no blanket perfect solution for your runs, and even if you find a good one, it might break down. Drone upgrades can have extra upgrades of their own, or side grades, but that gives you a new part that you need to pay special attention to taking care of. Because sure, slapping a gun drone together is neat, but it won't solve all your problems. You'll have to adapt to all kinds of situations. It's fun when a plan comes together, but the real Dusker's experience is when things fall apart. It just takes one thing going wrong to open up a domino effect of typos and opening the wrong doors. Even if your drones don't die, you might need to redock your boarding craft to a different airlock and set off a new elaborate rescue attempt. Some of the best gameplay shows up trying to salvage a scuffed situation. There's a lot of fun in swapping parts around and trying to use what limited means you can to get past the challenge. And the drones aren't your only tool for this. Your spaceship itself is part of the equation. It also has upgrades. It also has a signal feed that can break down. As you scour for scrap and fuel across the universe, you'll notice there are all kinds of ships. Some might be barges with lots of scrap, or military ships with defensive turrets inside, and you can have space stations and facilities. These come in different class sizes and ages. Class A types can be huge with multiple threats and a lot of things to find, whereas a D class might just be three rooms. 
Older ships have more possibilities of negative effects like radiation leaks or structurally weak rooms that a bomb can make a bigger issue. So commandeering a vessel will mean exploring it fully and removing all threats living or otherwise. Different vessels can have different max scrap capacity, upgrade slots, fuel amounts, there's all sorts of stuff. The ship upgrades are the most notable though. These can give you in-game abilities like remotely powering a generator, rerouting power, or coming to a derelict where the map has already been surveyed for you. An upgrade to the upgrade can even tell you which rooms are weak. So that alone adds a whole new dimension to everything, but some upgrades are specific to only certain kinds of ships. For example, a military craft might let you dock at some stations you wouldn't be able to otherwise because you don't have clearance. It might also come with a cannon. So if you're aboard a non-cooperative derelict and there's a room that absolutely must go, why risk a drone when you can Donnie Darko a hunk of iron through their roof? You're given a lot of engaging options, and even if you don't like the RNG stuff, a lot of that can be toned down or turned off, even down to the permadeath aspect. No matter how you set it, you get lots of options and tension for a while. The core game is great, but my biggest issue with Duskers is what's not in Duskers. Namely, progression. I've seen people complain about auto-navigating drones get stuck on objects, but that seems more intentional. It's frustrating when that happens and when the rooms are small, but there's a difficulty option for that. There are a few bugs and a few things out of balance, but I don't have a huge issue with those. It's more, you know how you can leave a derelict at any time? That's the whole game. I would wager most people would get at least a dozen good hours out of the game, and then you realize it's out of tricks. There's no super cursed ship, or new hazards, or new enemies. It'll be the same stuff you've been facing all game, just more of it and more often. Even if you're gunning for the story objectives, you'll have seen all the game has to offer long before getting the whole picture. These objectives are usually just variations to what you are already doing. Like you might need to commandeer a certain kind of ship, or lure an enemy into your landing craft to be scanned, or clear a level without using a generator. I have friends who love and highly praise this game, but none have actually finished the story. I can't blame them since it's so inconsequential and in the background. And now having gone through the story, my opinion of that hasn't changed. It's not just because it's all in computer terminals, because I can put up with that. It's more that neither the game or the story give you any kind of interesting ramp up. Most story threads end with, this theory wasn't conclusive. That's not a great hook for most people when it keeps happening. You know, the resetting being diegetic sounded interesting at first, but following up on it, it's more like a one sentence spoiler that undercuts a story that's not there very strongly in the first place. If you keep playing to unveil more of the story, you probably can piece together what happened, but if you're past the point of fun and playing solely for the story, you're wasting your time. It sucks because you'll be sitting there and playing it, and then suddenly realize, alright, I'm done with this. And there's no insane final mission or intriguing story reveal, it's just done. I never like to quit out of a game when I think there might be more to it, but Duskers runs out of new stuff pretty fast for a roguelike. I don't like saying this game could have used more stuff, since you could say that for any game really, but this really could have benefited from a few more enemy types and some hazards to encounter. You already have plenty of tools, but you start running out of new challenges and just get new conga lines of challenges. It's still a good, very unique game, just don't go in expecting Hades level of replayability. When you feel like it's time to stop, you're probably right and you shouldn't go chasing the story. Nothing is revealed that is worth docking with the Nostromo again. Or the Dark Star. Still, it'll be half off on GOG on the pinned link for a while, hopefully. This is one of those games that's easy to recommend at the right price, but it also makes me a bit sad. The main developers talked about doing a spiritual successor or a sequel at some point, and this was made by a very small team. It's just one of those games that has such a strong core. Even now it could still be great if what it has was paced out differently. It's still a solid tactical game, but it is annoyingly on the verge of greatness. It's well worth giving a shot. So that's all for now. Next time will be an RPG where you can talk to the dead, if you want to do that. Thoughts on the Homeworld 3 trailer? It looks pretty good so far. Using space debris as cover seems like a pretty interesting idea. They also got back an original writer for Homeworld and Cataclysm, so it could be pretty good. Icepick Lodge is trying to release a Bachelor Alpha in October. Will there be a video? I don't know about them hitting that deadline, but no. I'm trying to avoid early access stuff as much as I can, and I still have to deal with the void. Will there be a Dead Space remake video? It'll depend on a few things, but I'm open to the idea of it. I've done some Dead Space videos already, so it would definitely be fitting. Do I play any advanced board games? Well, the pandemic was an annihilator of game groups around here, which is just starting to recover now. Like, Betrayal at House on the Hill is a fun one. I'd really like to try Gloomhaven at some point. But if you want to get some more casual friends into a nightmare scenario, I highly recommend Risk Legacy. 
It looks and plays like Risk, but the map stays persistent and more things unlock as the games go on. That one is really funny to watch unfold, especially with people who don't play board games that often. I don't think it got an official follow-up or second edition or anything like that, but if you know people who get really, really into Risk, pulling that out will be a different experience. Okay, I've got to get back to it.